Hey everybody, welcome to week 24. I can't even believe it's like, what? And we are actually in the fourth chakra and this is our first week of the fourth chakra. What's interesting about the fourth chakra is we begin with the heart and it's the first chakra that balances us. In other words, the idea of it's kind of the seesaw between the lower three chakra and the three upper spiritual chakra. So when we look at the green cards in general, we're looking at matters of the heart. And I want to say things that, that hurt us, help us, and expand our heart. So anything to do with the heart is going to be a part of this conversation. This week's fable is the fable of the green acorn, which you can see a big fat green acorn right there. <laughs> now, I wanna point out something though, with the trickery card, the correlation between these two fables is actually that one, that's Gavin, one and the other, are they're related. So if you look at the trickery card, you can see the green dragon. You can also see in his tail, let me just pull this up so you can see, whoop, in his tail, right, you could see the green acorn. You can also see squirrel with the a little basket of acorns, but the green acorn is being held in dragon's tail, and that's Kelly the green dragon. So when we look at that, and then we read the fable of the victim uh, fable, the fable of green acorn, we can begin to understand that his story is pulled out of that story. And even on the, on, even on the card, the victim card, you can see you can see the squirrel, you can see squirrel, and you can see green dragon uh, Kelly in it. Now, again, this becomes important because this shows the perception of the victim. It shows the perception of how someone felt they were taken advantage of. And I think that's something interesting to really look at here. The idea that the green acorn in and of in his own right, he was promised a starring role in that fable that he didn't get. And so we hear in this fable all about how he feels that he was taken advantage of and that uh, he, he has gone on to greater things. Now, you're going to read the fable, so I'm not going to get too into it that way. But I do want to say to you that the biggest thing this week when we look at uh, this particular fable, I want you to remember that when I talked about shades of each chakra, the acorn, the green acorn, uh, is the first card. It's the first card in green. It's the first fable here. And when we look at this fable, we begin, we begin with the idea, almost the foundation of the heart chakra is for us to be as full and fulfilled in our life as we can be. And acorn really illustrates that he is not. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a victim or that you are not feeling fulfilled. It actually illustrates something that you may not be. And it also illustrates, a, a, I want to say, an alternate reality, so to speak, that you can look at that and go, that that isn't me. So sometimes, and especially in the cards themselves, people will look at it and go, I don't feel like I'm a victim though. But remember what I say, what opposes exposes. So it may not be that you're a victim, but it may actually, I want to say, expose the victims around you. So that becomes important when you look at the idea that his story and then your story, how they may actually be similar in some ways, or they may be different. Now, remember, in this fable, there's more than one character. In general, there's going to be the acorn, there is the dragon, and there is squirrel, but there are a couple other characters in this fable. So look closely at the characters in each fable, because you might be playing a different one than the lead in that sense. Okay. So we begin the heart chakra with the idea of really grounding ourselves in personal responsibility. Because when I talk about what exposes, what opposes exposes, 
you know, victim may, may expose the idea that we need to take personal responsibility. So let's take a look at the idea of choice here and what that, what that can mean for you. So this week's focus is actually the quote from the fable and it says, I am not a victim. I choose to be doing what I'm doing. Now, it's interesting because you can see that actually in these choices, um, Acorn is actually a little bit of a victim. What does that say to us? Well, it says to us that if we spot it, we've got it, meaning maybe we've played that card before. It's like, oh, I'm okay right here when we're really not. And ask any guy, you know, when he, when he says to a woman in his life, he says, um, how are you doing? And she's just fine. Fine is like the worst thing <laughs> you can hear a woman say. So just so you know. Now, the message of the week here is that the this particular, we begin this, and it says here, the fable that exposes the excuses we give to settle for less. And are you settling for less in your life? Is this time in your life something that in your heart, you know that you could have more, but boy, this is okay as it is right now. And um, I think that when we look at it this way, an excuse is always fear-based. Think about this for a minute. It's like, well, you're late. I know I'm late, but this is what happened. That's an excuse. What am I afraid of? I'm afraid of being judged. And so if you really look at it, and we say, it says it here, actually. Um, here we go. An excuse is always directly rated to a belief, and all beliefs are based on fear. And there you go. It just, that is the formula. So when someone is... Saying, saying a lot of excuses, you could say, look, please don't fear my judgment. I'm just letting you know that something's disturbing me. You know, I don't like it when you blah, 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 you know? And then, well, I do it because I don't need to hear that. It's okay. Like, I'm not going to chastise you. I just want to let you know how I feel. See what I mean? When you say what's true in your heart, you give the other person an opportunity to be true and go, okay, yeah, I, yeah I'm sorry. I'll work on that. See, then it opens up communication, and communication in the heart is the most valuable communication we'll have because that's the, that's the stuff that makes us say, this is who I truly am. Now, um, okay, so the idea here, of course, is that what is true to you in your heart is always going to come from a place of love. So, you know, I was doing a reading for, for a woman years ago, and, you know, she said she was really an upset, but she said, oh, does he love me, and is this going to happen in my life? And I said, well, hold on, because she was getting more and more and more desperate, right? And I said, I'm going to ask you to bring your energy just to a very calm place, and she did. And I said, now from this place, I'm going to invite you to tell me if you're ever going to find love. So what do you know to be true in your heart? And she said, I know I will. And I said, okay, so since you know you will, when I say to you, I'm validating that and I do see that as being true, is that more real to you? And she said, yes. Because you see, once we're in an upset and we're trying to get something externally from someone else, we're never going to feel the the happiness in our heart over something that we have created as breakthrough in our lives. I hope that makes sense. So this is, and this is, hey, look, Tori's tip. Acorn represents the stories we tell ourselves that may disempower us. The fable itself offers us the opportunity to rewrite them. We can rewrite our history. Now, you can't change an experience, but you can change the meaning you made of it. You know, and I think some of you have heard me tell a story about uh, having a client who really was saying, oh, my mother, my mother was, you know, um, abandoning me, right? And basically through a series of conversations, she came to see that her mother was not actually abandoning her by this behavior that she had herself judged. Her mother was actually trying to protect her from witnessing something that her mother didn't want her to feel pain over. Now, when she framed her life from my mother abandoned me to my mother protected me, what do you think her life experience became? 
So you see, we can take an experience and really kind of see it from another perspective. And this is, by the way, what a good intuitive will do. We see it from another perspective and we offer you an idea around that. And then you get to choose and say, oh, that's true for me or that isn't. Whatever your truth is becomes very real. So um, let's see. Um, this is about opening your heart to a new way of being. Okay, so when we look at the first thought of when a card comes up or something like this and it says victim, we immediately go, I'm not a victim or that's not me or, you know, how many people are going to go, oh, that's me, I'm a victim, <laughs> you know, like very, I don't think in all the time I've read these cards that or played with this, these fables that anybody has ever come forward and said, oh my gosh, it's me, I'm a victim. <laughs> it's like most people go, no, I was abused or, you know but they very rarely want to quantify or qualify themselves as a victim. And who would, right? Because that in and of itself has a negative point of view. However, you know, something that I want to say that really came forward to me today, hold on, mm, is that Sometimes when people are consistently focusing on the problem and they want some kind of restitution for things that happen, years and years and years ago that no one can change for them and you say okay well why don't we make why don't we make a change going forward they don't want that change because you see if they try to change they will have to give up being a victim of someone else's bad judgment and the other thing that happens is that giving up being a victim means to some people forgiving forgiving bad behavior or abuse from another person. So you can see how it's sometimes it's much safer for certain people to stay in the victim idea, ideology of their life, because if they do, then the abuse they suffered always stays validated. It's real. It's very hard for a lot of people actually to just move on from the the victim status because it is a status. And that is something that a lot of people can't really wrap their head around. But if you think of it this way, if I say to you, my mother beat me, and you say, hmm. I say, my mother beat me, and you say, wow, that's awful. Yeah, I know. And you go, wow, that's so bad. And, and we talk about it, and it's like, yeah, wow, okay. So now you know that I suffered at that from that, right? But then, you know, if you turn around and say, gee, I wonder if you have thought about doing some personal work to work through it, then immediately I can jump into, of course I have. Don't you, you don't think I'm a victim, do you? I mean, of course I want to change. Of course I want these better things for myself and my family. I want to up-level myself as a woman, as a marginalized person in community. I want to up, but you see, the truth is I really don't. Because the minute I up-level my life, then what'll happen is I won't get the attention and the validation of having been abused. So you have to recognize that when we look at these two fables, and when we look at the, the fourth chakra in general, you have to really look at, are you willing to step outside of the role that serves you? So keep that in mind that whatever role you're playing, whether it's the victim or the victimizer, there is a benefit to it. And you get to be that role for as long as you want. Okay. So, you know, the thing to keep in mind also is that acorn is a very tongue in cheek fable. It's very funny. It's not meant to be, oh my gosh, it's meant to give us a view. I want to say a, um, a window into seeing behavior that we can recognize as being something that may not be the most optimal. Let's put it that way. So the other thing I want to say, let me make sure. Um, the biggest thing with ACORN is really listening to your heart. And when you know something not to be true, you call yourself on it. That's really key. And then um, let's see. Uh, you know, one of the things that, um, that ACORN really brings up also is the idea of a false ceiling. You know, meaning we've got this false ceiling there, it's made of glass, and we know that we can only go so far. And part of it is, what do you think happens if we try to break through that, that 
glass ceiling, false glass ceiling. Well, when we break through it, there's going to be shards of glass that rain down and we, good chance we'll get cut by it. So remember that moving through to the next level in your life or giving up that role means only one way to go because you must get, you know, stronger in, in the end run. I hope that's making sense. But, you know, you can always, if you, something's not making sense, please ask down below. Um, and I'm certainly happy to answer those questions. Um, the other thing that happens here that I think is very important is that waiting for someone to be bad so you can make them wrong to prove that something bad happened to you. You know, and I think I that, that <laughs> this is really funny, actually. My, um, my phone just kind of like somehow picked it up and was like repeating, I don't know how to get a glass ceiling removed. Okay. Um, okay, so making someone else wrong. And the other thing is setting people up to fail. And it's very interesting because at, at this recording, I'm, I'm working on, uh, you know, my first class for my chakra wisdom tarot of just the introduction uh, portion. And one of the things that I'm recognizing is that, um, you know, I want it because there's some chat, you know, the, uh, how can I put it? There's instructions that can seem confusing and that can give people an excuse for not doing it or for doing it halfway or not really understanding and then showing up and shaming themselves because they didn't do it right. And one of the things I say in that is, I want to set you up for success. <clears throat> and so I'm going to explain clearly how to do all this because that's the, that's the difference here with this particular fable. And it says, you know, ask yourself, am I waiting for someone else to fulfill a promise that I intuitively know they have no intention of keeping? just to prove that promises to me are broken. Just recognize, are you doing something to prove a point in a way that will disappoint or hurt you? Because the bigger conversation is validating that you're right, that these things did happen in your past and that you really were abused. And I think that's a big part of how the green chakra Opening with acorn gives you that information right away. Now, um, obviously, you've got the exercises this week. One of the things I want to say in the solo exercise portion on page 109 in the workbook, if you're using the app, I'm not sure, you know, the, uh, the Kindle, I don't know what page it is because it's slightly different, but it's under solo exercise. And um, it goes back to what I just said about like, what is it that you really need this other person to do? And so what, what you really want to write out, and these are the things, it's, it's actually in here, so don't worry about that. It says, because you disappointed me, comma, I blank, I'm angry you didn't show up for me because blank, what I really needed you to do is blank. So, <clears throat> I think that's going to be very important because how you handle disappointment or things not going the way you want, where are you when that happens? What is your personal state when that happens to you? So I'm going to, of course, encourage you to do the Tuesday, which is the color reflection, the journal journey, and the make a connection. I read the solo exercise, but the group exercise uh, becomes more interactive. I think it's really fun to do the group exercise because then you get to work with others and get that kind of feedback. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Um, the other thing I want to say um, is the meditation becomes important because you do want to play out in front of you how you see your dream happening. You know, I don't know about you, but years ago, when I, because I had so many, you know, I had so many issues, I could open a magazine stand, but um, because I had so many issues, one of the things that I would do when I fantasized, and I was joking about this one day in a meeting with people, and I said, you know, I'm so good at this stuff that not only do I imagine the marriage, but I just go ahead and imagine the divorce just so I can get it all created in one fell swoop. And so what I want to say to you is that has a lot to do 
with the idea of victim and the idea of that mentality is not just I'm a victim it's the benefit we get from staying in a place that is not of service to us or of service to others and that's the key and what I'd like you to write below is what have you noticed about parts of you that keep you stuck so that you can prove that someone else is wrong. Go ahead and post down below. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope you're having an amazing, fabulous, juicy week. And I will see you next week.